Order. I now call the Right Honourable Gentleman Member for Dorset West to make an application for leave to propose a debate on a specific and important matter that should have urgent consideration under the terms of Standing Order No. 24. The Right Honourable Gentleman has up to three minutes in which to make his application. Sir Oliver Letwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I can be brief. In the light of the Government's decision to prorogue the Parliament uh, next week, it has become an urgent matter for Parliament to discuss, in particular for this House to discuss, whether it can accept a no-deal exit. And I therefore am asking you to grant an urgent debate understanding Order 24 about that matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm very grateful to the Right Honourable Gentleman for his application, which is not entirely a matter of surprise either to members of the House or to large numbers of people outside it. I have heard what he said, I am familiar with his rationale, and I am satisfied that the matter is proper to be discussed under the terms of Standing Order No. 24. Does the Right Honourable Gentleman have the leave of the House? gentleman clearly enjoys the support of the House. I will go further. I will be my normal generous self to the Honourable Gentleman the Member for Wellingborough in advertising for those who didn't hear it that the Honourable Gentleman was robustly objecting, which he is absolutely entitled to do. So people need be in no doubt that there was an objection. In those circumstances, it is necessary for at least 40 members to rise in their places to support the application. There is a very much larger number than 40 members rising in support. So the Right Honourable Gentleman has obtained the leave of the House. The debate will be held today as the first item of public business. It will last for up to three hours. Uh, That is to say, if it starts before 7 o'clock, and it will arise on a motion that the House has considered the specified matter set out in the application by the Right Honourable Gentleman. We now come to the motion in the name of Sir Oliver Letwin and others to be moved under Standing Order No. 24. I remind the House, and it is a case of reminding, as reference was made to this matter only a few moments ago, that a paper with the terms of the motion has been distributed. To move the motion, I call Sir Oliver Letwin. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to move the motion under Standing Order 24 that's in my name and in the name of many honourable right honourable members across the House. This motion, Mr Speaker, arises because of four facts. The first fact is that over the last six weeks, the Government has not produced a single indication of any viable proposal to replace the backstop by any alternative likely to prove acceptable to the EU. The likelihood of the Government reaching a deal at the Council meeting on the 17th and 18th of October on the terms that the Government itself has set is accordingly slight. The second fact is that this is the last week in which Parliament will have the ability to block a no-deal exit on the 31st of October. Because the Government is proroguing us until the 14th of October, and the Government has made clear that it will fight in the courts any legislation proposed and passed to mandate an extension of the Article 50 process. There will not be time, after the 14th of October, for Parliament both to legislate and for that legislation to be enforced on a reluctant Government through the courts. The third fact is that in the absence of a deal with the EU on the terms that the Government itself has set, and in the absence of an order from the Supreme Court that the Government should apply to extend the Article 50 period, the Government will lead our country into a no-deal exit on the 31st of October. This has been made clear by the Prime Minister on repeated occasions. And the fourth and final fact 
is that so far from constituting a threat to the EU that will force them to capitulate and remove the backstop, the government's intention or willingness to lead the country into a no-deal exit is a threat to our country. The Prime Minister is much in the position of someone standing on one side of a canyon, shouting to people on the other side of the canyon that if they do not do as he wishes, he will throw himself into the abyss. <laughs> that is not a credible negotiating strategy. And it is, I will in a moment, and it is also not a responsible strategy, given that the rest of us are to be dragged over the edge with the Prime Minister. I, Mr Speaker, in the light of these four facts, the slender chance of a deal being struck on the Government's terms, the fact that this is Parliament's last chance to block a no-deal exit on the 31st of October, the fact that without a parliamentary bloc the Government is willing to take us into a no-deal, and the fact that the prospect of such a disorderly and undemocratic no-deal exit is a threat to our prosperity and our union, rather than an effective negotiating strategy, in my view, with the EU. In the light of these four facts, we are putting forward to the House today a motion, the sole purpose of which is to enable the House tomorrow to debate and vote on a bill in the names of the Right Honourable Member for Leeds Central and my Right Honourable Friend, the Member for North East not Bedfordshire. Me. Not me. <laughs> Certainly not me. <laughs> if the House votes for this motion tonight, it will give itself the ability to vote for that bill tomorrow. And that bill will mandate the Prime Minister to seek an extension to the 31st of January unless he's either got a deal in place at the end of the European Council meeting in October and has got it agreed, I will in a moment, and has got it agreed by Parliament or has got Parliament to agree to a no deal exit by the 19th of October. It's decision time. If honourable members across the House want to prevent a no-deal exit on the 31st of October, they will have the opportunity to do so if, but only if, they vote for this motion this evening. I hope they will do so. Yeah. Order. The question is the motion as on the order paper, as on the paper distributed. Mr Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It is a pleasure to follow the Leader of the House. I should remind him that Lord Cooper in the Court of Session said that parliamentary sovereignty is a purely English concept that has no counterpart in Scottish constitutional history. In Scotland, here, here. the people are sovereign, here, and that, of course, will be a matter of importance as the people of Scotland decide what their future will be. Here. I have to say, Mr Speaker, that I'm rather surprised by the right honourable gentleman, who's always been a student of the rights of this House. Because the harsh reality is, the reason that we're in the situation that Parliament has been prorogued is because the Prime Minister has instructed three stooges to go to Balmoral to give an instruction to the Queen to shut this place down. And for all these pronouncements that this is normal, it most certainly is not normal for Parliament to be prorogued for five weeks. And we know the simple reason is because the Government is running away from the powers and responsibilities that this House has. It is shameful, it is disgraceful, and in that regard, I am deeply honoured and privileged to endorse the motion in the name of the member for West Dorset. Mr yeah. Speaker, yeah, yeah, yeah. today the Scottish Government has launched an ambitious programme for government aimed at tackling climate change, building a fairer economy, mm -hmm. reducing inequality and improving the lives of citizens across Scotland. Mr Speaker, a government getting on with its day job. Twelve years into government, yet still focused on making life better for those in Scotland. But while government in Holyrood is stepping up to meet the challenges facing both Scotland and the world, Westminster is quite literally shutting down. There is very much a tale of two governments. While the SNP is doing everything here and in Edinburgh to move Scotland forward, the threat to our economy and society from the right-wing Brexiteer cabal occupying Downing Street exactly cannot so. be mitigated yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, Mr yeah, Speaker, yeah. they must, they will be stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A sham is what reports say of the Prime Minister's advisers have called his EU negotiation strategy. Running down the clock is what the Telegraph is reporting those 
close to the Prime Minister say his strategy is. Mm -hmm. A complete fantasy, reports say the Attorney General advising the Prime Minister of his approach to the backstop. Mr exactly. Speaker, the tall tales of this Prime Minister are being exposed by the media by the minute. Sources are exposing the smoke and mirrors behind those playing games in number 10. Does the Prime Minister think this is a game? If so, it is a very, very dangerous game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make no mistake, the Prime Minister is acting like a dictator, shutting down Parliament, ripping up democracy and silencing the people. I give way. Honourable gentleman for giving way, and he's making some very strong points. Um, would he agree with me that if the government was serious about negotiating, and there were serious negotiations going on, then the negotiation team wouldn't have been cut to a quarter of the size of what it was under the previous Prime Minister, and you wouldn't have meetings going on where the chief negotiator is saying that the rationale for talking to the Brexit team in the EU is domestic political handling. My honourable friend is absolutely correct. It is a complete sham to say that negotiations are taking place. This is simply a government that is driving us towards no deal, and Parliament, thankfully, is standing up for its rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Prime Minister seems to have forgotten in this place we have been elected to represent the will of our constituents, and we on these benches have been elected to serve the people of Scotland. The people of Scotland who have overwhelmingly voted to remain in the European yeah. Union. Yeah. Yet this Prime Minister, by proroguing Parliament, has decided to ignore the will of the Scottish people, sideline their interests and silence their voices. And I say to the Scottish Conservative members, don't stab Scotland in the back tonight. Yeah. Stand yeah. together with us. Stand for once, for once, stand up for Scotland's interests. Yeah. 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 While the Prime Minister clearly thinks he can do whatever he wants with Scotland and get away with it, the SNP is here today to tell him that we aren't having it. Since coming to office, the Prime Minister has not given Parliament the opportunity to debate the constitutional crisis facing these islands. And despite Parliament previously ruling out leaving on a no-deal basis, the Prime Minister is peddling us towards the cliff edge, risking a no-deal Brexit, risking jobs, risking food and medicine supplies, yeah, the yeah. population of the United yes. Kingdom being oh, threatened oh, oh, by this government. I'll, I'll give way first to very, very good, Chairman. Give if the, the first observation I have about this government is amazing how much they're enthralled uh, to the date given to them by uh, Donald Tusk of the 31st of October. It's now become sacrosanct for Brexiteers, that EU date. But the other thing that strikes me about this government is they're looking to have a jingoistic pre-hard Brexit election, but they're fearing a post-Brexit election when there are empty shelves and lacks of medicines because a lack of Lack of food on the shelves and a lack of medicines do not election victories make, and they will be decimated after they do the damage. So they want to cut and run and see if they can get over the line before they do the damage. My uh, honourable friend is, is correct, and the responsibility that this House has is to make sure that we don't have the catastrophe of a no deal Brexit, to protect yeah, yeah. us from that risk. And yes, we want an election, but we want an election safe in the knowledge that we protected our citizens Absolutely. from a no deal Brexit. Yeah. That is the right thing to do. And let's remind ourselves that the Prime Minister has not been elected by the people. He has been put in power by Conservative members. He should put himself in front of the people. But yeah, let's, in the first case, work together, work collectively to remove that cliff edge of the 31st of October. I thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way. Does he recall very clearly, as I do, that on the 6th of April 2016, we were told by the current Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster that when the day after we vote to leave the EU, we will hold all the cards. Does that not simply show that this government has been run by a hopeless, naive group of fantasists? I have to say, it grieves me to see what has taken place, because in effect what has happened with the election of the Prime Minister, that we have had the Vote Leave campaign that now runs the government. And the harsh reality is that Conservatives sitting on the back benches that are prepared to put our national interests before party interests are going to be forced out their party. What has happened, Mr Speaker, is that the Tory party have been taken over by a cult, and that does nothing, absolutely nothing, for our democracy. I'm very grateful to the right of the gentleman.
uh, he's completely right that Scotland would be harmed by a no deal, just as my constituents in Nottingham would be harmed by no deal. He's absolutely right to uh, say that this bill is required as an insurance policy against that no deal. But would he also agree that anything that dissolves Parliament before the 31st of October, whether it is uh, through prorogation or uh, a, a, a jingoistic election, as uh, the Honourable General for Nahil and Nahar suggested, would put at risk our constituents because there just is not the time to put all the legislation, the preparations in place, that insurance policy before the 31st of October. I think my honourable friend is right to signify that we are facing a constitutional crisis. And I, I want to applaud members of parliament right across this House that have worked together over the course of the last few weeks collectively because we understand the risk that there is to our economy. Mm -hmm. We understand the risk that there is to our communities. And thank goodness that members of Parliament have shown that desire to work across the House. Here, here. And we in the SNP have made it clear that we will work with everyone else. We will make sure that we remove that cliff edge. We have done that consistently ever since 2016. We want an election, but we want an election when we can get to that safe landing place, that we have that no deal taken off the table at the 31st yeah. Yeah. of October. But I say this, and I no, mean, no way do I mean it as a threat to anyone in this House. The people of Scotland deserve the right to be able to determine their own future. We cannot allow ourselves to be taken out of the European Union against our will. We have a mandate from the 2016 Scottish election yeah, to deliver yeah. a referendum for the people of Scotland. And it is absolutely right that the people of my country that want to remain as a European nation should have that choice. And the Prime Minister and his Brexiteer cohorts are not going to drive Scotland out of the European Union yeah, against yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give way one more time. I thank the Right Honourable Member for giving way. Does he, like me, feel somewhat disrespected tonight by the contribution of the Leader of the House, who is yeah. disrespected? our Speaker and his decisions, and everybody who has supported this motion. I'm proud to have my name on here, yeah, yeah. very yeah. proud to stand with people who are willing to put country before party, country before self. I wasn't sent here by my constituents to make them poorer, to put their jobs yeah, yeah. at risk yeah, and their yeah. health care. And I think that's our overriding priority, that we are here to stop a no-deal Brexit. This isn't about whether we're Remainers or Brexiteers. No. Many people who voted for Brexit would continue to do so, but not for a no-deal Brexit. I believe there is mo no majority in the country or in this House for a no-deal bre Brexit, which is a disaster for the people of this country, yeah. of all four nations. I, I think the Honourable Lady makes a very passionate case. And we must reflect on what is in the Yellow Hammer document. It is not made up. It is not anybody on this side of the House. It is the government that recognises the risks that there are to the people of the United Kingdom. When you have, when you have a government that is telling us that there is a potential risk to food supplies, when you have a government that is telling us that there is a risk to medical supplies for those in particular that need epilepsy drugs, and good grief contained within the document it talks about a limited risk to water supplies for hundreds of thousands of people. Just think about this. Think about a government that is telling the people of the United Kingdom that we cannot guarantee that you are going to have a water supply. Here, here. What on earth are we exactly. doing? Mr Speaker, the nub of this is that this is about ideology. And however people voted in the Brexit referendum, they certainly did not vote for this. Here, here. And when you consider that the Treasury published a document last year that showed that a no deal Brexit could reduce GDP over a 15 year period by something close to 10 per cent, just dwell on this. You are talking about an impact on the economy that is four times greater than the economic crisis of 2008, the economic crisis that ushered in a decade of austerity. It is the height of irresponsibility, the height of irresponsibility for any politician 
to think that we should be supporting no deal, yeah. putting constituents on the dole. Mr Speaker, unemployment is never a price worth paying. Yeah, but yeah. the government are prepared to put the people of the United Kingdom on the door. We will not sit back and allow that to happen. One last time, and then I'll make progress. The right honourable gentleman for giving way. He's making a very passionate case as to why no deal would be such a disaster. Does he agree with me that we have to once and for all dispense with this notion that it's some bargaining chip in these negotiations? Shooting yourself in the foot because you don't get what you want is not a negotiating position. I'm grateful to the honourable gentleman, and he's absolutely correct. It is delusional, and they should start telling the truth to people. There will be no. Dis- one, one last time, one last, last time. I thank my right honourable friend for giving way, but does he agree with me that what we hear from Europe is there is isn't actually any proposal on the table from the government anyway? So there has been no serious negotiation to get a deal, and it's all literally a fairy tale and a sham. Well, I, I don't know what the Prime Minister believes when he was asked several times today by members in this House to tell us what proposition that the government's making. There is none. It's a sham. This is a government that's heading us towards the cliff edge of a no deal. That is the reality. Mr Speaker, the deepening of the democratic deficit under the Prime Minister is despicable. This decision is an outrageous assault on basic democratic principles. And yet the Prime Minister and his cronies will argue that this is normal, a suspension he argues is quite right and proper. What ridiculousness. Now, I know the Prime Minister has never been one to deal in facts. But let me make it clear for members. In the last 40 years, Parliament has never been prorogued for longer than three weeks. Mr Speaker, in most cases, it has been prorogued for only a week or less. To try and argue that five weeks is normal, if we're being polite, is disingenuous. So, Mr Speaker, the reason that we are here today, why we want, for a better phrase, are taking back control of the order uh-huh. paper, we are doing this on a cross-party basis to stop the Prime Minister from running down the clock and obstructing the right of our MPs, our democratic right, to debate, to vote and to represent the will of the people that sent us to this place. The shameful act from the Prime Minister is because he knows there is no majority here for a no-deal Brexit, because he knows there is no support from the public for a no-deal Brexit, because he knows what we all know, a no-deal Brexit is catastrophic for the lives of citizens across these islands. Just in office and the Prime Minister is toying with our democratic processes. Ruth Fox, director of the Hansard Society, said it was an affront to parliamentary democracy. And why, Mr Speaker? Because he, the Prime Minister, wants things his own way and at any cost. The real reason he can't bear for Parliament to sit and debate is because he knows he does not have the majority to support his disastrous plans to destroy our economy with a no-deal Brexit. What an embarrassment to parliamentary democracy. Well, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister cannot stop MPs doing their jobs. We will be heard, and democracy must be respected. Just last week, I was proud that my party signed a declaration alongside MPs across party in Church House, warning the government, and I quote, any attempt to prevent Parliament from sitting, to force through a no-deal Brexit, will be met by strong and widespread democratic resistance. Has the Prime Minister still not listened? Even today, a group of cross-party politicians are in Edinburgh for a full hearing of the Court of Session, attempting to prevent the Prime Minister from proroguing Parliament. My honourable colleague, the member for Edinburgh South West, has already called on the Prime Minister to swear on oath his reason for the prorogation of Parliament. Will the Prime Minister do so? (laughs) Well, yeah, I think we know the answer to that. We also have a group of experts in constitutional law, human rights and justice, writing in the Times, arguing that the recent decision to prorogue Parliament sets a dangerous precedent and furthermore is incompatible with executive accountability to Parliament as prescribed by the Constitution. Has the Prime Minister no shame? This is a blind power grab showing total arrogance and contempt for the electorate. 
Instead of giving the people a new Prime Minister listening to their wishes, the Prime Minister has robbed the people of all power. Yeah, yeah. What does this mean for this Prime Minister or a future Prime Minister shutting down Parliament on a whim? For us from Scotland, what protection do we have if any UK Prime Minister sought to shut down the Scottish Parliament? Yeah. We need to protect our Parliament from this Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, it is clear that this House is not supportive of the Prime Minister's actions. This emergency debate is crucial as MPs today need to carve a way forward to allow emergency legislation against no deal to be passed. The cross-party bill seeks to ensure that the UK will not leave the EU without a deal unless Parliament consents to such an outcome. It will also require the Prime Minister then to extend Article 50. This is a crucial step to prevent a catastrophic no deal, to protect our economy and our communities. This is how we can come together to avoid a no deal Brexit and protect the interests of citizens across these islands. And Mr Speaker, fundamentally to protect not simply the rights of Parliament or parliamentarians, but the rights of the people. The denial of Parliament having its say denies people in Scotland and across the UK their say against a no deal Brexit. We in the SNP cannot countenance that. I urge members unite to stop a no deal Brexit, to stop this Prime Minister, this dictatorship, and to restore democracy. Tonight, Mr. Speaker, it is our turn to take back control. Yeah, yeah. Tonight, the Prime Minister is going to be stopped in his tracks. Yep. The Prime Minister has tried to rob the people of their power. Now it's our time to rob him of his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come Thank you, Mr Speaker. Myself and my party have been consistent over the last four years in voting against this country leaving the European Union. And we do that for many reasons, but most of all because that is what the people who elected us to speak for them in this place want. Scotland did not vote for this, and Scotland does not <coughs> want this. But we have never in these debates suggested that the result of the 2016 Brexit referendum should be ignored, set aside or overturned by this Parliament. What we have said is, it is the legitimate and proper role of an elected Parliament to consider the consequences of this course of action, and if in our judgment we believe those consequences to be sufficiently dire, then we should allow the opportunity for the people of the country to reconsider the decision they took in 2016 in full knowledge of the facts and knowledge that we now have available. And what is at risk now is the right of this Parliament to exercise that degree of judgment. It is a shame in many ways that we have to move this motion tonight and that we have to pass emergency legislation tomorrow. It ought to be the other way around. A government, particularly a minority government, ought to be coming to this chamber, trying to find consensus, trying to explain itself, trying to get us behind it. <coughs> but instead, that is not happening. And the reason why so many people find it necessary to do what we are going to do tonight is simply because we have lost faith in this government. Yeah. Not only has the government today, in a moment, not only has the government today lost its majority, but it has also lost the trust of this House. Yeah. We do not believe the Prime Minister when he says he is trying to get a deal. We see no evidence of this whatsoever. Yeah. And we do not believe the Prime Minister when he says he respects parliamentary democracy because he is trying to shut down <coughs> the ability of this House to debate his actions and their consequences. The seeds of this problem were sown long before that. They were sown when a right-wing Conservative government decided to seize on the result of the referendum and use that narrow majority and interpret it for its own ends to restructure this country and its international relationships and its economy. And even now, even now we see a situation where the government is committed to pursuing the hardest of Brexits, crashing out without a deal uh, if, if it deems that necessary, and it, you actually even believe that that is the preferred course of action. And it knows not only is there no majority in this House for that course of action, there is no majority in the country either for that course of action. 
Now that brings me to the topic of the election, which is an associated matter here, because there have been suggestions that are we to do this, then the Prime Minister will immediately throw his toys out of the pram and go to the country and demand a general election. And we have already had an echo of the gross populism from the Leader of the House that may well come to be reflected in that campaign, something which I think does his character no great service, to be honest. But if that is the election that is going to come, then let us be quite clear. We need to have an election before this country crashes out of the European Union without a deal. Yeah. So we're ready for an election. Bring it on. But either have it before the 31st of October or extend that deadline of the 31st of October so that we can make a decision as a people and elect a parliament before this fait accompli is presented to them. That would be the legitimate thing to do. And I would ask the Prime Minister that if he really wants to have an election, then don't engage in these procedural shenanigans and this duplicity in trying to game the Parliament. Put the proposal for a no deal <laughs> Brexit to the electorate. Put that to the electorate, explain the consequences, and see if that is what they vote for. And when that happens, I will relish the prospect to contest that election. Because we shall not only be contesting that election in order to prevent and stop Brexit and have a reconsideration of that strategy, but we shall also be explaining to the people of Scotland that this is their chance to consider having a different course of action than the one which they have been allowed, uh, led down by the current Prime Minister. And I am confident that when we go to the people of Scotland, so many more than ever before will not understand the attractiveness of having political independence over their own affairs and being able to control their own destiny and establish their own relationships with the rest of the countries in Britain, in Europe and the world. And that is what is coming down the track. I warn the government to be aware of it. Yeah. The question is that the question be now put. As many as other opinions say, aye. Aye. aye! Of the contrary, no. no. The question is the motion as on the paper in the name of Sir Oliver Letwin. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. Yeah. Division! Clear the lobby. Order. Order. The eyes to the right. 328. The nose to the left, 301. Yeah. Not a good start, Thank Morris. You. Order. The eyes to the right, 328. The nose to the left, 301. So the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Unlock. Another Burko fix. Order. Point of order, Mr. Ian Blackford. Mr. Speaker. I have to say the public will be watching these deliberations tonight and what they make of the baying and the shouting that's coming from the Conservative side, heaven only knows. This Prime Minister has a 100% record in losing votes in the House of Commons and you would have thought that we would have had some humility tonight, but that's sadly lacking. Prime Minister, perhaps you might consider acting like a Prime Minister should do. Respect Respect the vote which has taken place in this House tonight. Let us have a bill tomorrow. This House can express its opinion that it wishes to remove no deal as an option. Don't give us this nonsense of a fantasy that there is a deal to come from the Government. It is simply not true. The Government must respect the sovereignty of the House of Parliament, must allow the bill to be enacted, must allow it to have royal consent. And yes, let us have an election, but let us have an election that respects the democracy of this House and the desire that parliamentarians have to make sure that we don't crash out on a no-deal basis. Yeah. Mr Speaker, this Parliament has spoken, and we have spoken on behalf of the jobs and the livelihoods and futures of our constituents. Yet again, we have shown that we do not want a no-deal Brexit. And tomorrow, we have the opportunity to make sure that, yet again, we do not crash out without a deal. And I would remind the Prime Minister, as one of the so-called leaders of the Leave campaign, 
He promised the people of this country that we would not leave the European Union without a deal. If there are no further points of order, the clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day.